Christ. Uh, I still want to appreciate God that despite our doings, that despite human faults, His covenant still stands. His love still with us. I want to appreciate God also that we have reputable men of God like you keeping the flag flying most especially in the United States where it is even more difficult to practice the doctrine of the church. Uh, I want to appreciate God in the life of the pastor because I cannot say anything without him. And for giving all this privilege, I want to thank the HOD and the deputy HODs. I want to thank the, the, the directorate of training. Hmm. I thought he would be a venerable because I listened to the introduction too. I don't know why he still be as superior. And I've known him to be superior for long too. So definitely he also humbled himself. I'm not saying that others did not humble. It is our right. And I want to take, thank those that have taken that right. I don't know why the director has not taken his right too, but I pray the Lord will lift every one of us up. Amen. Uh, I, as I can see, even from the introduction, I have a different perspective concerning this workshop. I don't see it as a training workshop because everyone online that the way that has been introduced and everyone there, I know you are all, we are all trained shepherds, qualified shepherds. So my own, the way I see this workshop is that I, I'm being called upon to join you to discuss and to remind our sex of the doctrine of this glorious church concerning harvest. And I so thank everyone for giving me an opportunity to be a partaker. And I know that I'm not the only one that's going to speak today. So I also will take one or two things from the workshop. My prayer is that whatever we receive in this workshop today shall benefit our lives to the glory of God Almighty. Uh, harvest feasts to be glorious, impactful, and divinely acceptable. Uh, before I go into it, I'm glad to tell the whole house, the whole house that uh, when I was called, this harvest feast in particular is one of those things God put in my mind that I should go out and straighten things. And to the glory of God, these past 20 years that I've been privileged to establish a parish as the director of training have introduced me. In fact, the way we have it in Sharon Parish has been the reason for our great success and expansion to the extent that the directorate has explained. It's, in fact, and I'm so happy to be called upon to, to discuss it, not to trade, but to discuss it so that we will all share our views and build on it. Hallelujah. One harvest, first of all, to the literal person, is about planting in a field and then harvesting the results. And the farmer and all those he put on field to harvest, they are happy, they rejoice, they celebrate. We are all Africans, we know what it means. But in the same manner in the spiritual realm, harvest 
there is a field called this world, this earth, which God has so much labored on. And the first two harvests by God, we can see the result. The first one was when he called on Adam, and Adam was naked, who could not appear before God with joy. He was naked because he disobeyed the injunctions of God. Then the next, so he was driven away from the presence of God. And God caused everything around him to punish him. So the only way out then was that God looked at the product of that first family, that is Cain and Abel. So he wanted to bless the land through harvest from the two children. Hold they on, came. Sir. Just one moment. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Right. I, I, you know, I think you're sharing your this thing, your presentation. Are you not yes. sharing it? The yes. slide. I'm sharing it. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. Yes, I tell you, you're ready to share it. When you're ready to share it, sir, let, um, because you, we you need can, to be seeing it. Yeah, the way you, you can do that, that from your computer. Me. Oh, and, let me. Yeah. Share. Yeah, it, they can help you to can share you see it. it. Can you see it now? No. No, you, we are only seeing you. That's, if why, some, that's why I have to pause you. Uh, okay. okay. Yes, sir. See, and you come out a lot of him, and totally help you. Let me share. Let me. I want to be. I think I share and continue on. Yeah, and they call us share, share screen. Yeah, one is share screen. They click on the share screen. Okay, okay. Oh, you have to be fast. Admin, admin, share if you want to share calls. Can they share screen? One? Yeah, they have all, all the permission they needed. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's right. If you have any challenge, let me know so that I tell them. Uh, brethren, I'm sorry because he sent it to me and I want him to share his screen. That's why I have to pause him. I'm so sorry. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think he's, he's doing it now. Okay. Yes. All right. Wonderful. That, the, that that's right. Are, uh, are we true? Yes, sir. Uh, even before I get to that, I'm just trying to explain how I've started with God. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Himself. Then go ahead. Uh-huh. So he called on these two children, that is Cain and Abel, to present, to appear before him, to appreciate him with what they got on the earth. One failed, and the, one, the other one made it. And that is Abel was blessed, but the sacrifice of Cain was rejected. So that's another event that would have brought blessing through the two. Unfortunately, Abel was uh, fortunately Abel was blessed, but he was killed by Cain. So what happened again is that God now looked down and brought Noah. That's another harvest. He wiped everyone, every everywhere with water, he wiped them away and brought just eight souls. That's the, that's the fruit God could get from that episode. Eight souls, Noah and his family. He established them. But when he came back again, it was all rubbish. Because Noah started wrongly. He got drunk. I won't be surprised. No wonder God told Celestians, don't drink. And I'm happy to say, I don't know of any other part issue. I know we don't drink at all, even in our harvest. I believe so. <laughs> so he was told not to drink because alcohol caused havoc again through that harvest blessing, through Noah. Now, as he went on, God picked Abraham now. But as we could see, Harvest was established by God, particularly through Noah. Some people, let, let me say, the other, uh, our brethren, like the Pentecostal, we say this harvest celebration 
uh, some learned people will say it ends with uh, the Israelites. No. Because in that Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, when Noah sacrificed after the flood, when he, he, he worshipped God, laid an altar, worshipped God, and blessed God, God blessed him in return to say that harvest will continue as long as the earth remains. That is in Genesis 8, 22. So harvest is not a thing that ends there or with the Israelites. It's a continuous something till the kingdom comes. Now, God gave the blueprint of harvest to Moses in Genesis, as we see in the Exodus chapter 23, 14, verse 14 to 17. There, now, in that case of Moses, which I want us to know, the harvest that was given to Moses was targeted at how they will possess the land, how they will occupy the earth, how they will flourish on earth. That was what that harvest was targeted at. But the harvest given to Celestia is beyond that. It has been upgraded. We are not only to occupy or take our possessions on earth, but also to inherit the kingdom Christ has gone to prepare for us. So that is why, in fact, the habits we are having now should be more spiritual than that of Israelites that was given through Moses. Why am I saying this? If we don't know the genesis, if we don't know the purpose, if we don't know what brought about harvest, let me tell you, we may not get the goal. The, the purpose will determine the goal. Where there is no purpose, let me tell you, there won't be goal. And there won't be anything to score. So what was given to uh, Israelites now was meant for them to get their possessions on earth. I would quickly take us back to Genesis chapter 15, where Abraham was told to, br to bring before God a sacrifice uh, so that he could know that he will occupy the land, he will possess the land. So Aves could also be defined as a way designed by God for us to occupy, for us to take our possession, the treasures, he has laid for us down on earth here. The way to get it, in fact, harvest is one. So this harvest of a teen is a great secret. It's a mystery given to we children of God called Celestian so that we can occupy, so that we could be rich even into his kingdom. So it now becomes a feast. It's a feast, but a divine one. And in our own generation, to reflect, for us to come together as a people to reflect on our past and make amends. And to, it's also meant to, to remind us of the heaven beyond. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We now go straight to the purpose in particular. The purpose of harvest. As I've said, that it, is, it did not end with the Israelites. It's a continuous thing. Harvest feast has been referred to in many chapters, even in the book of Zechariah 14, 16 to 18. They call it the Feast of the Tabernacles. But let me tell you, this harvest is meant to determine those who reference and obey God's ordinances. Because God cannot hand over his resources, his good resources, to just anybody. He did it to Adam, and it failed. Adam did not work for it, but because he got it on a platter of gold, he lost it easily. So this time around, God is watching for those that will obey him, those that will reference him. So if we do 
this feast, what God is watching is that is, is looking at those that obey him, those that reference him. That's number one. Number two, to determine those that really appreciate him for his benevolence to mankind. And let me tell you, it's not only to those we that are called. In fact, we are also given the privilege to invite everyone. That's why we throw invitation to the whole world. The whole world needs to appreciate God. And it's another forum where when we invite people and they see how we worship God, how we reference God, we convert them. So God is always happy. In fact, that is the most precious thing God is looking for in our midst. When we invite people and we win their soul. Again, Abbas is, tar is targeted to remind everybody about the end of the world. That is the rapture. The rapture. Just as I said to the ordinary farmer, when he plants, he comes to sow and to destroy the task. So in, in the same thing, this world, Jesus said, is a field. So the rapture is the end of the world where everything, the, the good seeds will be separated and the stars will be set on fire. So you see, these are the goals before we celebrate Abed. As I said, it's a feast to be celebrated by everyone who enjoys and appreciates the works of God. They've come to show appreciation. The Harvest Feast program, therefore, must be arranged in a way that sin can be discouraged and souls must be won, must be won for God. When Harvest is wrongly celebrated, the result and effect is a catalog of catastrophes. We must be very careful to do things right so that blessings of others can be ours. Mm -hmm. As I said, we know that others, that the one that is given to even the Israelites and we Celestians, contains two things. We worship God and we present our offering. We, we, in, in that offering also, we feast. We make people happy. All those things are yastic for God to bless the church and his people. So as a form of offering, any offering before God, he detects, he sets the standard, he sets the pace. You cannot bring offering the way you like. You can even spend money, you can bring the whole world before God as offering and it, it may not be acceptable. So you must bring it according to the standard God has laid. So let us now consider some of examples of offerings before we go into that uh, harvest as it contains giving to God in appreciation. Abraham, as I said in Genesis 15, from verse 8 to 15 there, we saw how he brought the materials before God according to how God wants it to be. The items, I will, uh, the items he presented before God, they are, they are, let me just read it. And he said, Lord, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? That means that offering is to guide Abraham and to empower Abraham that what God has promised him will come to pass. In the same manner. Now in verse 9. There. And he said unto him. Bring before me. A heifer of three years old. And a she goat of three years old. And a ram of three years old. And a turtle dove. And a young pigeon. He specifically mentioned what he wants. And in verse 10. When he brought these items. The way he presented it. The way he's presented on verse in chapter, and he took them, he took unto him all this and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another. But the best divided he not. That means offerings are brought before God on specifications. Apart from that, when he brought the offerings, God now sent the agents to receive the offering. Look at what he did. 
And when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abraham drove them away. Eh? Like we normally say in Yoruba, Orubo, Otunjo Koti, Abi, Orubo, Keboje, Orubo, Keboje. He sat down looking at, like, our, uh, in fact, we need to teach our members seriously. Some people will bring offering, maybe work clock. And then they will now be looking at the shepherd as he plays it on the wall for them to see. And shepherd, the wall clock I brought, I've not seen it in the church. The shepherd decides what he does with the wall clock. You have presented your offering. Just turn back and go away. Whatever the shepherd does with the offering is left to him and God that sent him. Abraham failed that in that aspect. And this is what we do in our harvest. There are many things we do that we fail before God. After harvest, instead of him having a sweet dream, he had a bad dream. The scripture said he, he slept and he was covered by darkness. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. Oh, this is what has been happening these days. After harvest, what do we see? We expect blessing, but the other way around. Uh, 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 brethren and the Lord, let us examine what is happening around us these days. I've personally observed that after many, uh, many parishes, after their harvest, the next thing you see fight, disagreements, quarrel, things are not going... Uh, in fact, a lot of disunity comes into the church immediately after harvest. And we now look at how do we solve it. We will not know that it's because we have done so many things wrong in the harvest. So harvest is an examination period. Anyway, that is one for harvest. Israelites also, God gave them, just like we Celestians, materials to use. But look at what God said in Isaiah 1, from verse 10 to 15. You see, he condemned everything. The Pentecostals these days, they use that to condemn our essence. It is not incense that is bad, but the people that have defiled themselves. And that is why God condemned those materials. Those materials were given to the Israelites, just as he gave to us. But if we don't Follow God's injunction, those things will not work before God. God will not accept. We are talking about an acceptable offering before God. That is for the Israelites. Even Jesus in his teachings in Matthew chapter 5, 23 to 25. He said, even when you bring your offering before God and you know that somebody has an offense against you, put it down. Go and settle with him. So giving offering during harvest. <laughs> It's a serious task. We need to consider so many things. Another offering I want us to look at is Jesus himself as an offering for the atonement of our sins with all that he has done on earth. You can imagine that last day at the Garden of Gethsemane. He went to pray. Three times he was telling God, can we change the system? Can we change this style? Is there, can't we choose another way? But God said, no, that's the only way I want it. So, Abel's feast must be done in the way God wants it. I haven't cited these three examples. Let us now go straight to how to celebrate this Abel's feast given to Celestial Church of Christ. We all know Exodus 23, 14 to 20, they are God commanded that three feasts, three feasts we, we should make annually before him. The feast of unleavened bread, <clears throat> the feast of the harvest of the first fruits. I take that to be the juvenile harvest. You see, in fact, we are so blessed in this church. Why do we have juvenile harvest and adult harvest? You see, juvenile harvest, like in Nigeria now, we plant immediately the rain starts, like corn. 
Now we have harvested corn and so many uh, items we have been harvested. That means the first step, the juvenile harvest, tells, uh, guide us to the next, to the general harvest. If we do juvenile harvest very well and God is happy, he's going to bless us to end well. <coughs> Excuse me. He's going to bless us so that at the last, at the end of year harvest, in fact, we will see his blessings. Excuse me. Now, God has said these two harvests before us to help us. It's just like in the educational line. We have first term, second term, and third term in the primary. And in the higher institution, we have the first and second. So if you are not doing well in the first, you prepare to make up in the second. Oh, God loves us so much. So if you are not done well in juvenile harvest, at least you could make up for the adult harvest. These three, now let us look at, because of time, Hmm. Let us look at the questions. That's Deuteronomy chapter 12 from 11 to 32. The passage explains God's warning concerning offering generally, and it also applies to others. Let us just read and pick two or three things from that passage. Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Either shall you bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifice, your tithes, and so on and so forth. That means there is a place. There is a particular place. You cannot just sacrifice anywhere. That verse that is a categorically God wants that you must not offer your sacrifice just anywhere you see. Hallelujah. As shepherds, people come to us, they worship, and at the end of the worship, you follow them with your prayer. Oh God, may your grace follow them. You send them away with God's blessing. From that altar that you are in charge, and whatever they find, whatever help, they receive to achieve whatever they achieve. They should come back before that altar and give thanks to God. That is where they are registered. And that is why at the end of the year, you're supposed to, to bring your offering before that altar where you have always been blessed. So you cannot just take it anywhere. We have seen it in the past. We are somebody, a parish, maybe because there are not many. They now see a rich man, maybe he came there to worship with them. They say, Daddy, the Lord said you should be our harvest chairman for the year. Is his name registered there? So there's a particular place where God registered. We have ordained somebody, release his blessings weekly, daily. Even when you are out there, he's still watching for you, praying for you, that, and the angels in that altar, they follow you. So if you want to bring offering, you bring it before that altar. That is where God has registered you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, in that passage, it said, you must eat before God with all your people. It must not be taken home. That's the Roman 12, 18. You eat it. I'm a gem benny. It's a feast. In fact, at times these days, I feel so guilty. And I know there are many reasons. I, uh, well, you see, in Africa here, yeah, we are hungry. But thank God, in America, you are not hungry. Abi, <laughs> there's food in abundance in America. The issue of takeaway is wrong. You eat it before God there. I remember in those days, our, our fathers, they will warn us. They will teach it. 
And said, even yeah, when you eat, watch your suta now. I hope there's no single seed of uh, uh, rice. You must not take it away. But today we package it. The only people we can package food for is the priest. The priest, maybe because they have so many places to go for or whatever, they, are, they can take away, but not members. Not members. Members cannot take away the food. Like in Nigeria now, in a day, we have so many parishes holding harvest. So some chambers we go to three, three, two, three, four parishes. While living, they can arrange and, get, and package food for them. They are ordained to carry it, to receive it. They are priests, but not members. But today we give to everyone. Maybe because it's rich, uh, because he has done this. No, we're supposed to eat it before God. Uh, verse 25, 26, 28, that the feast must be rightly done so that it be very well with you. But in verse 15, chapter 15, 21 to 22, he also wants only holy things are acceptable by God. Your offering must be without blemish. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This goes to the members of the church. But we priests, how do we know that the material, the money somebody is paying for harvest is clean or not? But we need to tell them, you must not steal and come and pay for harvest. You know, I've seen people they have taken it that every year they must kill cows. So wherever they want to get the money, they will go. We are not to be blamed. We, we don't know whether that money is clean or not. God knows. Well, we must tell them. We must teach them. Thank God. We all know that most Celestians came from the Muslim sect. We are every year. It's compulsory. It's not with Celestia. Even the Muslim circle, it, it isn't so. But because they are, I don't know how to describe it, we, it's not by force. So we must bring holy things. We, let us not lie to ourselves. Do we know how many Yahoo boys today that bring money for harvest? Oh yeah, they can even give three cows, two cows. But, and we salute them, we encourage. One thing is that we must not encourage them. Here in this passage, God specifically says they must not bring anything that is blemish before God. And in verse 32, do not behave like them. That's verse 30 to 32, Deuteronomy 12. Every abomination to the Lord, which he has hated, is a pity, sir. One of those things I observe these days that we do that is like them, like who? Like the heathens, idolaters, the seven nations. God drove a way for Israel to occupy the land. One of the satanic behavior is spraying of money. Spraying of money. I'm sorry to say this. It's even, even written in our constitution that during worship, we must not spray money. Apart from that, we know everything about Celeste. When it comes to giving money, giving to God, do it secretly. People from our collection will know it. So when you give money in the church and people are seeing it, Jesus said already, you have received your reward. Don't expect any reward from heaven. But in these days, where you now praise people, the church is meant for Christ to be, to be, to be praised, not human beings. But these days, where you praise people, and you did not see these people to give secretly. And that's why we now praise them and we hear them so that they cannot spray as if as they spray in the party. Is the presence of the Lord a party arena? All these things are abominations. They are the habit of the Eden, the idolaters that God drove away 
from the land. So God will not be happy. He will just look at it, just like I think last Sunday's uh, 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 lesson about Ezra, where God said he drove seven nations for Israel to occupy. When Israel got there, they supposed to give glory. How do you give glory to God? It's not by mouth. By showing good character that God will be proud of saying, look at my children, how they are behaving well, unlike the ungodly. But when our ways, our character, in fact, is even worse than the hidden, God will not be happy. So we must not copy their way, spraying money, healing people before the presence of God is, a, is an idolatry. It's the character of idolaters. So that is in that chapter 30, Deuteronomy 12, 30 to 32. He warned, we must not behave like them. We must not act like them. Well, let, let me, because of time, I'm watching the time. Let me go to straight to the way to celebrate adult harvest. The way to celebrate it so that it will be impactful, glorious, and acceptable by God. As I said, after celebrating juvenile harvest correctly and reap the reward, next is to appear before God to show appreciation by celebrating adult harvest, which is the feast of in garden at the end of the year. Now, let us look at it one by one again. Deuteronomy 14, a, a, a passage that explains harvest feast very well. From 22 to 29, let us pick it one by one. What God expects our fathers in the Lord. <laughs> this place, every time I read it, I say, wow, we need to teach our people. We fail to teach them. What God expects everyone to spend, that means member to spend during celebration, is one-tenth of the total income for the year. And that is written in verse 22. Thou shalt truly, look at, he, he wrote it, truly tight all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. Wow. <laughs> As I said, test of obedience and faithfulness. Let us consider you people in America, <laughs> unlike Nigeria. There's no Abuja in America. You, you live by what you earn. Abi, it's in Nigeria here, people can expect windfall from any angle. And in America, there, whatever is your income, the bills are there. Well, let me tell you, our God is a faithful God, very faithful to his word. Here in this passage, Ejo, Emma Bino, we have seen Pentecostal. We are the priest even when, when you receive salary from January to December. The first salary in January, you should drop it for them. I don't want to mention denominations. They pay and they survive. God is not asking that we bring the total salary here. He said there are two tithes we must pay. There's one tithe, just drop it in the box there. You are earning 20,000, drop 2,000 monthly. Drop it. That one, you don't need to eat, just drop it and go. The, the, the priest will collect it and you'll be blessed. Then from that very month again, you start saving another 2,000 for 12 months. That is your harvest due. One tenth of your income. Only someone that has faith that can do this. And let me tell you whether we agree or not to the standard stays. God will never waive a standard. I just pray God should forgive us. Amen. And, and accept our offering. That is what God demands. Hmm. When Jesus was used as sacrifice. Jesus stood by the standard of his father. My father, can this cup change? He said, no. 
That is what I want. In the same manner, we need to teach our people. Hey, this it is because we don't teach our people. That is why we now go and, and, and modify things so that we now get money. We use our five senses. Tell them it's one tenth. Whether they do it or not, tell them it's one tenth of their income. I say, hey, but I pay that, yes, but this one too. He, he wants one tenth. And there's a way they're supposed to spend this one tenth in the harvest. I will come to that later. He said, you will eat everything before God, and nothing must be taken away. That's verse 20. I've said that. Celebration must be done with the fear of God in your heart. Oh, that passage. I want you to bring it back again. 14.23. 14.23. Please, I want us to know this passage. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn. Of thy wine, of thy oil, that means every angle you got money. And the firstlings of thy heads and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Somebody came to me last week. He said, Daddy, I want you to pray for me that he needs wisdom in his calling and he needs wisdom to handle his marriage. I looked down, how I, I should pray for you. Then the spirit led me. I said, to get wisdom, you are going to search for one thing. And you should start searching for that thing today. When you get that thing, you get wisdom. And what is it? The fear of the Lord. Look at it. Once we fear the Lord, the scripture says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That means the fear of the Lord is the foundation upon which wisdom will stand. Let me tell you, this fear of the Lord will give us wisdom. Wisdom to do what? Wisdom that will carry us on to riches, to treasures that are hidden on earth. God has hidden treasures on that net. Many of us are sitting on treasures and we don't know. But if we fear the Lord, he will not give us wisdom. Okay, look down, tap this, touch this, go this way. We get direction. We get wisdom to handle it. Today, let me tell you, we lack wisdom because we don't fear the Lord. So in, in uh, 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 Abbas' feast, one of those things God is after is that, do these people fear me? <laughs> Where is the fear of the Lord? There are some areas I just, I, I just, because of time, I want to rush. Where is the Lord? Where is the fear of the Lord? When the target is money, and when the money comes, we behave like Anania and Safira. Mm -hmm. I did so. Thank God, I, when uh, Superior uh, Akonde was in Nigeria for long before he went there, and many of you, sir, we know in those days, uh, oh yeah, keep that money. Oh, don't allow Ketu to take it to where they go. We get our money back, and we are indebted. To so, 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 man, before they share the money to Ketu, all those are Adania and Safira attitude, showing that we don't even fear the Lord at all. Hmm. The fear of the Lord in that passage is very paramount. So, in the case of the Israelite, God instructed that dear. Uh, in uh, another place, I want us to know after that one tent in that chapter. 14. He said, when the place is far, turn it to money and go there. Stretch your hands. I'm sorry to say, I want to explain this. Though we have turned it to bazaar sales. Yes and no. But what is the interpretation of this place? In those days, the house of worship was only in Jerusalem. So somebody that is far away from Jerusalem and has 10 cows as his offering. How do he carry the 10 cows and be cooking for people to eat? He will sell it over there, then come to the church premises. They have all the goats on the cows there. He will now use it to, he will now begin to purchase those materials he will cook because it's an individual thing. He has to feed people for seven days. Now, to us, how do we practice this? 
Let me tell you, my money, that tight, one tenth, you have to spend it, give the committee, take care of the levies, the federal, the motherless, the strangers. Like in the day of harvest, how many people buy clothes for us? If, if, you, if they cannot buy clothes for the shepherd, can they give him a blow for him to be happy? It's part of that tight. And in the day of harvest, mm -hmm. how many, a family that has three children, remember the days of Elkanah, every member of that house must carry their offering. Okay? The wife must carry, the husband must carry, the each child will carry his or her own offering. Today, do we do that? We even drive away the children. They're in the Sunday school eating rice. They don't come before God. All these things, we fail God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, when it comes to, you convert it to money, let's say the issue of bazaar, I want to come in now. Thank God. I said, I'm not teaching. We are just reminding ourselves and discussing it. In the days of Babo Shofa, do they sell anything in the sanctuary called Bazaar? In the days of Baba Bada, do they do that? Did, they, did we do that? Apart from that, even the materials, these materials they must have prayed for at least seven days. What they will sell, and it's outside the sanctuary, not inside the sanctuary. It's a grace given to Papa Ochoa. I agree. It's a grace that go and sell. And then you make the money. But don't sell it before me. Go outside there and do it. But what do we do today? We bastardize the grace. We sell even the present. All because as they are going, if we don't sell it now, if they don't buy, leave it. Don't, God can send angels to come and buy it outside there. Again, have you prayed to, into those materials before selling it? You can imagine the materials they want to sell as bazaar. They are bringing it on Saturday or lunch. I know me. No <laughs> prayer. How then? How do people see the results of what they buy? It's not impactful. It's not resultful because it's all garbage in, garbage out. And let me tell you, this harvest must be done for seven, eight, for seven days. Each day of the week has its own glory. The glory of each day must be in that material, in the altar, praying. The angels, Aradia, must have touched those materials. Is it the water? Is it the honey? Is it the salt? To transform life. Let me tell you, it is because we don't keep to all these things. That is why people who buy it don't see results. And they will never wait to buy. And that's why we now hurry up. Oh, yeah, yeah, come and take, come and take. Selling in the presence of God. Uh, my fathers in the Lord, those that sold in the temple in those days, what did Christ do? He drove them. I've never, some people used to say, and Jesus could be no, he flogged them. Hallelujah, sirs. I wonder if it were, if were the America of these days, a priest should not flog people. What will happen? Oh, my Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jesus flogged them. Those to say it's a great abomination to buy and sell before the altar of God. These things we do, and the, all, the, the harvest has no more glory. The glory of God does not manifest in it. And people are not, they just not see it as a party gathering. Let us go and dance. Then can spray a war. Then they display our garment. And I'm sorry to say, display our new year. Mm. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In that verse again, there's a place there. We must appear before God with joy in your heart, you and your household. Ah, uh, I think I have just 10 minutes. I'm I'm keep I want to keep to time so that I can know how I can I know I can finish it. 
because I too want to listen. Now he said, you must appear before God with joy in your heart, you and the people around you. I want to tip in this information. You see, all that God recommended that we should do during harvest should not end with the harvest. This is what God told me about two years ago. He said, all I learned, all that we learned in the primary or secondary school, do we forget it? We practice it on. Everything God has written is a mystery. It's a secret given unto us. So go and practice for the whole year so that the blessings of God will come upon us. Taking care of the Levites is not for a week alone. If not for that week alone, it's, for, it's continuously. We pray for them. They go, work, and come back. They must, they must make us happy. How do they make us happy? They must give us gifts. So it's not for that week. Members must be taught to make their leaders happy. When a leader is happy, in fact, before he opens his mouth and say, Jehovah, that person is blessed. You can imagine a shepherd is opening his mouth and his, his heart is sorrowful. In fact, if he quotes the whole Bible to bless someone, that blessing will not come down. So anyone, let me tell you, we are a container of blessing that God has blessed before people. Just make that container happy. Once you tap it, papa, you see the blessing flow. It will flow. So. Uh, we must teach our members that make sure you keep Levi's happy. It's not only that week. This one is just an example. The people we must make happy around us to get God's blessing. The Levi's, the widows, strangers, and the fatherless. Do you know that all these people, even at the end of time on, in heaven, we will, be, we will account for them. Jesus will say, I was hungry. And you fed me. Say, when? I was sick. I was naked. And so on and so forth. All these things. These are people that are involved. That you do something good to. And God will record it for you to make heaven. Not only this world. I haven't said that. <clears throat> you see. When God told me that I should tell people that the practice should not end with the week. It's a continuous something. And we are going to stand and account for how we, how we, what we did to those people in heaven. What you do to the Levites, what you do to the widows. Even the church as a, 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 as a group must take care of the widows. We must have records of how we take care of these type of people in our midst. The widows in our midst, we must take care of them as a church. Even from the little income we have, the fatherless, the strangers. I thank God for the Celestial Church. If I if travel like that, you don't have anywhere to stay. Ilya is there. Unlike Pentecost. So it's part of taking care of strangers. Any of you that you are hearing me now, we remember how you got to America and how you were received into the house of God. And from there, you became great. That's good. Another thing in the feast is that we must rejoice and make people happy. In fact, we pass in that. Ah, Celestia and rejoice. We sing Follow and God. dance. That's one area that yep. we have done. Very, very good. Hello? So, the, the, uh, taking care of the widows, strangers, fatherless, as I said, you see, is a duty of all believers. We must take care of these people that are around us. We must teach people. We must teach our people. In fact, we must have a group. I'm sorry to say this. I just want to tip in this information. As uh, the director of training said, Sharon is so fortunate. In fact, it's a special grace. Not that I know or I'm powerful, or I'm a prophet. No, 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 no. In fact, I'm the laziest person in Celestial Church of Christ. I'm the king of the lazy people. And that's why I remain humble. It's by grace. We have over, let me cut it short, over 1,000 members. And that 1,000 members, do you know that 
We have groups that take care of widows, both inside and outside. We take care of six over 60 widows every month and over 60 blind men every month. God just told me to do it. And since then, in fact, I created welfare group and we have an account. When I manage the account, I now hand it over to this uh, committee to handle it. We, we, we share nothing less than 500,000 every month to this set of people. I got the knowledge from Harvest Feast. And during our Harvest Feast, these people must come. We have a table for them. We might at time, there was a day the, the blind man said they want to see me. I said, well, what again? After receiving their package, when I got to them, they gathered and started praying for me. Ah, in fact, I was moved. You see, the way they were praying, they were so happy. So let me tell you, as an agent of joy, we must make everyone around us happy. This passage, we remember those passages. Do you know that when you say you should appear before God joyfully, it started for your home, you and your male child and your female child. Why is it? You, God has counted both husband and wife as one. Then the children, happiness, charity begins at home as a father or a mother. How do your children look at you? What do they feel about you? I remember in my days when I was very young, each time my father travels, I feel so happy. I feel so free because it's, <laughs> you know, the cane. You must not make any mistake. But I'm always happy with my stepmother then because I did not have mother from childhood. So my mother died while I was crawling. So my stepmother, once my father is out, mm, then two things I remember. When my father is coming back home, mm, I will run to collect the bag. And I, may, I, may, I, I must make sure I control my actions, my steps, everything, the way I, I will prostrate. But when my stepmother comes, goes out and she's returning, I will run to collect the bag. Even on the way, I'm already looking at the bag. What did she bear? What did she buy for me? Thank God for you in America. You are not like we Africans here. I know each time you return home, your children are happy. Daddy, have you got the burger for me? And so on and so forth. You remember your children to buy or to take them out. And children are free because it's a free land over there. But if you look at Africans, wow. So do you make your immediate neighbor, your immediate neighbor is your close family, do they feel happy? I thank, I thank God for something. I learned something from Americans. I, you, you are you are Americans anyway. When I say American, you are one of them. The way celebrate birthday. Even the children, your child when celebrating birthday, the whole house is celebrating. Unlike African here, who remembers birthday. <laughs> so the children are happy. <laughs> you make them happy. It's an injunction of God. You must make your environment happy. We are agents of happiness to distribute joy to every soul. Our life must produce joy to people that are sorrowful from your house, after your house, you know, after your, even if you have servants, your, your servants, either male or female, must not look at self down and say, I'm considered, I'm being treated like a servant. You, you treat your servant as your child. You make her belong, that she belongs to that family. After all, we were not a family of God in the beginning, if not for God's grace, particularly we blacks. Only the Israelites God called his children. But by grace, the slave has become a child. The child has now become a king to rule with the heir. We are John heir, isn't it? Uh, so you make everybody happy. Then after your house, the next thing is the Levite. Let me tell you, every family that does not practice this thing does not celebrate harvest feasts properly. 
You, say, you make your immediate family happy. Then the priest, that is the next thing. How do you behave in church? Is it those gatherings, against, gang ups against the shepherds? Oh my God, these things are blocking the blessings of God. Everyone that wants to receive harvest blessing was, must make the leader, that is the shepherd, happy. Must make the workers happy. So out of that one tent, which I said, you now, after giving the committee, contributing your money, you now think what you give to the shepherd, his workers, and so on and so forth. Let all of them feel happy. I want us to consider these things. There are many of us. Do you, do you know that our members, the amount they spend in the clothes they wear for harvest is even three times or double what they contribute hmm. in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is the harvest meant for uh, show, show your dress? No. The dress some people wear, the less they wear is more than what they contributed. Let me, we have the, the, a lot of things. I, I know I spent one hour now. I don't know if you give me, how many minutes you want to give me to round up? How many minutes do you need, sir? Oh, okay. Let me, can I have 10 minutes? Go ahead. That's, go ahead. Thank you. That's given, sir. Okay. As I said, the feast must be observed for seven days. God worked for six days and blessed the seventh day for us to rest. Yes, it's easier for us in Africa here to plant harvest for seven days, unlike in America. We, I, I know it's not possible, but at least we should try three days. And by grace, God will accept it. And even now, with technology, we can still plant that seven days. Look at what we are doing now. Very marvelous. They can be in their office or wherever they are. They can join online because each day has our own glory. Monday, like the Yorubas we say, what is they call Monday? Ojaje. And on Tuesday, we call it Ojaje Shegun. So each day has our own glory. Ojaje and so on and so forth. So every day we must observe it because those are the days we are going to, to work throughout the year and we carry each day's blessing into the year. So it is very, very important that we observe it. Even with technology, we can make that seven days. One, another thing that God said we must not form before him empty and dead. Yes, nobody. Some people will say, I'm not working, but how are you feeding? And some people not giving you money. Yeah, you keep from that money. In fact, it is there you will move God to open way for you. If people feed you, you also should open your hands. God said, nobody must come empty handed. And it's not forceful. You give willingly. Now, Constituting the Abbess Committee or Lord who <laughs> <laughs> may God help us. Amen. Now, the committee, there are a lot of things there. And that is why Abbess at times does not produce the right result. What type of people do we put there? Okay, somebody that joins the church maybe within one year, two years now, he has money. We know, ah, let's make him the chairman. Do we know what we are saying? We are making him the chairman of the committee because he's going to guide and give money. That we know that that committee. No, it's a wrong idea. But the person that should head that committee must be somebody that is knowledgeable about God, knowledgeable about the doctrine, knowledgeable about others in particular, so that the the celebration will be acceptable before God. Do you know somebody that is made the chairman of the committee that is put in position because he has money? He will direct not according to spirit, but according to knowledge. How he also did, how he also did his business outside there. Eh? And is beyond five 
senses. Thanks. So when constituting the committee, let me tell you, it must constitute officers which must be appointed from the top rank down. So everybody must be involved. They are responsible for, the, for receiving all the contributions made by members and responsible for planning the events, reporting to the shepherd. Anything they plan, they carry to the shepherd. And that is where we guide them. And we shepherd also, we must be careful that they don't bring ideas that are not acceptable by, by God. I'm sorry to say this. Because of those people we make head of the committee and the type caliber of people we, we constitute our committee, that's why they introduce so many things. I'm sorry to say this, father of the day, mother of the day. Thank God that one is wiped away now. I can make anybody father of my day. God is the father of all the days in my life. Mother of the day, mother of the And we will decorate them in those days. We hope that we will collect money. Look at where money has led the church to now. The love of money. More especially in investing. The scripture in Timothy said, is the root of all evils. Today we see many evils coming to the church because of love of money. So in harvest feasting, we must not allow money to be our goal. Our goal and fear is that making an acceptable feast before God. Is it the Sunday worship? How that worship of God, God will look down and say, oh, I'm pleased and bless his people. Mm -hmm. I said, it is wrong for the congregation to think that it is the committee that should provide all the costly items of the feast. No. It's about teaching people. The, the, the committee are just helping we, the shepherds. All, every contribution about harvest should be sent to us. Then we organize who we cook and this. But because we, we want to share the responsibility. Okay, you committee, collect and organize. That is why they must, we have, we are in a position now to make sure we watch them, guide them. I remember in those days, all these things now have gone and I, it will go finally. And there are times during harvest days, they make sure they employ the services of a master of ceremony. Particularly on Sunday, Ellen would do sugar coated mouth. So that you'll be now inviting people and bang around, bang around, bang around, will be, oh yeah, call that one, so that they will spend money. And at the end of the day, we give them money, they are happy. I hope you have not forgotten the sugar coated mad people that sell bazaar in those days. All of them now are gone. I don't want to mention names. They go about looking for big churches. All those languages that have destroyed the environment, uh, all because they want to sell the materials. We don't need that. It's a church arena full of Holy Spirit. You want to sell material in my parish now, and because you, you want uh, people to buy it, one who are mortar, go go mission. Ah, Allah Maje. We're going in Sharon. No, you can't sell the whole nod. And we are forgotten that there are angels, new angels, charged with authority around whatever we say, they stamp it. All these things. I said, these are some of the wrong acts observed in the feast. Mm. The task for money. I have just about three minutes now by the shepherd. Yes, I want to go so tight. Because they did not pay the attack. It's better we teach them. When they pay all the attack, the money will be there. Settlement of debts from harvest returns. Stealing of harvest money under any guise. Uh -huh. Debts. We now, we now bring a list of debts. We, 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 who, who sent you message to go and incur debt before you harvest? It's wrong. It's totally wrong. It's Anania and Safiria method. Then sharing of harvest materials left over foods, food stuff, meat, etc. Any material that is left after harvest by the committee, they will carry everything and give to the shepherd. It is the shepherd that now decides what he does with it. But let me tell you, most of our committees, then they take the food home. It's an abomination. It kills. I'm sorry to say 
diseases are all over the world now. Many of these diseases cannot be cured. <laughs> eh? Cancer is there. Many, I pray cancer will not be our portion. Any Amen. food that is taken home, that is not directly given by the shepherd, take and go. Because uh, you are sharing it, let me tell you, it can incur, so, so a person can be cancer affected. The rice can cause cancer, and one cancer into, enter into that body. No medicine. But we too, we, we must be careful not to eat cancer. So one can eat cancer in a dimension of money by choristers or learn who. Choristers will help people or anybody that any money, give it to anybody before he sink, because he sink. All these things we must eat. Don't go and drop that money. It must be accounted for in the general. We know all these things. Color tattoos and like during harvest. Father of the day, as I've said, and mother of the day, and so on and so on. Tying harvest contribution to appointment in the harvest uh, committee, no. Uh, you buy them as well, no. Preventional treatment to feasting of guests. Oh, I wish I have time. I will have explained this. Let me, and that is why Celestia is love. We gather money together and we cook together and we eat together the same money. That one, you don't have so much fault in America because food is an abundance. But in Nigeria, here, different food for different group of people. Oh, no, go, go, are you? Mm. Now, unnecessary pre harvest strenuous night bridges for which financial returns. Yes, harvest. We, the door is good. We bless and pray over the materials to sell, but the target should not be money. Money will surely come. People will buy when they see the glory of God in whatever they do. I pray the glory of God will manifest in our lives. Merchandise mm -hmm. of material during harvest. I've said that it's not bazaar, it's not condemned, but it must not be sold in the house. Summary of the right things to do, making acceptable before God, adequate provision for everyone. All programs must be arranged to edify God and the church. All harvest leftovers must be handed over to the shepherd who will pray and appropriate them. The committee must be faithful to the last. All income must be accounted for without any misappropriation. The money gifted while the choirs, uh, choristers, entertain belongs to the parish. Use of alcohol, beverages is ungodly. Ah, alcoholic beverages, sorry. So, in America, I know. I want to be more on But let me tell you, over half. I, over 50% of cel uh, 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 cel Celestians now, they celebrate harvest with alcohol. They will change. You know, you know, long say, I might change that show you. I might rent all the money at Rianes in church. No, it's an abomination. So, I just can't do that, Robert, no? Yoku. Because my time is up, and I still want to listen to people also. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, thank you so thank you, much. Thank you. thank you so much. A round of uh, please let us unmute and uh, give our partner in Christ a round of applause. Thank you, sir.